friends, welcome back to my vlog. If you don't know me, my name is Heather and I run a handmade business called Lemon Tree Corner where I make purses and bags and project bags for makers. Uh, welcome back. Today in the studio, I'm gonna finish up the Metro Zip Pouch, the first one, and then hopefully we're gonna start uh, assembly line cutting out the rest of them. I'm also hoping to finish my granny, granny stripe blanket this week and lay that out for you and show you the finished product and move on to a new project or an old project that I can pick up again now that I'll, I'll be done with the blanket. And we're also gonna talk about creativity today. Uh, that's something that I'd really like to focus on on my channel. How can we be more creative, allow that space for ourselves to be creative, allow the opportunity for that muse to find us and just do what we love to do in life, whether that's crafting or writing or painting or whatever, whatever your joy is in life. So we'll talk about that a little bit better with a wonderful book called The Crossroads of Should and Must. And this is just a great book that I was turned on to. And I'll share a few pages with you and a few thoughts from the author later on in the vlog. So let's get started.
Okay, friends, it's book time. Uh, today we're going to talk about this wonderful book called The Crossroads of Should and Must. Uh, Find and Follow Your Passion by Ellie Luna. I first heard about this book on Morgan Long's channel. I'll put a link to her channel. She's got a great channel talking about creativity and doing it for a living and just being yourself. And it's a wonderful vlog 
if you haven't seen it. Uh, I'd love for you to see her. She's one of the inspirations for this channel. But this book is all about finding your passion and following it. I'll read the back for you. We arrive at this crossroads over and over again, and every day we get to choose. Starting out or starting over, making a career change or making a life change, the most life-affirming thing you can do is to honor the voice inside that says you have something special to give, and then heed the call and act. Many have traveled this road before. Here's how you can too. So it's just really an inspirational book for all of us creative people. I'm trying to carve time to do the creative thing. Uh, it's really hard to do. I don't have any kids, but I can only imagine having a full-time job and a husband and kids and laundry and cooking and everything else involved in day-to-day -day life and just being tired and not really having time to do that thing that you're passionate about. And one thing that she talks about is the difference between a job, a career, and a passion. And I know not all of us get to choose that. We don't all get to choose our calling over a job or a career. Um, I'm in the same boat, I have a full-time job, and it's not necessarily what I wanna be doing all day, every day, but it's definitely, it pays the bills, and I enjoy working there. And I get some social interaction there as well, which I don't get in my home business. Uh, but it really just doesn't feed your soul the way that your calling or your passion does. And she just points out that a lot of times in life we pick the should. We should do this, our parents told us we should do this. You know, being an artist is not a steady job. You're not gonna be able to pay bills. You're never gonna be able to have a family. And so you choose the should. But we do get to choose every day what we wanna spend our time on. And even though you need a job to pay the bills, doesn't mean that you can't carve out 15 minutes, half an hour every day to do the thing that you love the most and that brings you joy. Why, why wouldn't you want to set aside that time for yourself? It's a, a sign of self-love, self-care, to do that thing that sparks your joy. Another thing that she goes into is really looking back at where did that come from? Where did this should come from? Whose voice is that should speaking in? Is it a parent's voice, a sibling's voice, a grandparent's voice? Uh, boss's voice <laughs> and are you true for me maybe this should was true for you at one time but is it still true for you and do I want to keep holding on to you is this should something that you can let go of uh, a lot of times we make a decision at 18 21 to go in a certain career path because it's the steady thing to do but maybe things have changed I mean we've just come out come out we're still in a pandemic and a lot of people have made a huge change in their lives over the last two years because of that, because seeing what's important and seeing what little time you have in the world really shifts your perspective. And maybe you don't want to work 50, 60 hours a week for a very little significant increase when you could be putting in your 40 hours that you're required to put in and going home and spending that extra time on yourself or your family. So a lot of shifting priorities, especially in our Western culture that says you have to work to death to be an acceptable person or to have self-worth. You know, self-worth comes from within. You don't need to get that from your job or a partner or a parent. That, that can come for yourself. You can give that to yourself. <clears throat> and one other thing she talks about is, well, what if I don't know what my must is? And this was true for me for years, trying to figure out what my must is. Uh, one of my musts is writing, but I am so terrified of writing that I would rather spend my time doing all these crafts, making YouTube videos. I haven't really tackled that must yet. Uh, but for me, being creative is a must, and whether that's scrapbooking or making bags or just doing coloring books Anything is that's creative to me, that has color, is really a must in my life. So I focus on those things. And maybe one day I will tackle the must of writing. I like that she also gives you prompts of how do I find that must? What if it changes over time? 
does everybody have one? I think that's a big fear of ours is if you've never explored that creativity, does everybody have, have that passion inside of them for something? What if you don't know what that is yet? And I love that she puts this, call your mom, <laughs> call your mom, because your mom is going to remember what you were like as a child. What were you into? What kind of things did you like to do and explore when you were a kid? Uh, so that's a good place to start if you don't know what that must is. And then I love this too. Once you find your must, write it down, put it everywhere, put it on the, the pocket in the plane, send it off in a balloon, write it down, burn it, whisper it to a bug, pin it to a coffee, co a coffee shop bulletin board. <laughs> Just announce it to the world, make it your screensaver. Write it on your bathroom mirror. So just really setting that intention for yourself and to the universe that this is something you really want to focus on and spend time on. And then the page that speaks to me the most, the self-doubt. Look at all of that. That is what my brain says to me every time I think about starting a new venture, getting paid for making my crafts. This is what comes up to me. Who am I to explore such selfish interests? What if I choose must and make people angry? If I want to choose must, when do I start? Do I have to quit my job? How long is this going to take? Will I be able to pay rent? So these are all wonderful questions that come up for all of us. And one of the ones I struggle with the most is, what if I am my own boss? which is a double-edged sword for me because I would love to be my own boss. That would be wonderful. But then there's other times where me being my own boss is not the greatest. My self-accountability is not the greatest. So I might set aside a whole day to sew and it'll be 12 o'clock, one o'clock, I'll keep putting it off and only wind up sewing for a couple of hours. So me being my own boss and not really being able to set uh, parameters for myself that's something I really need to work on if I want to do this for a living and have this be my business. I have to be self-accountable and really work on these things and get them done and not just slack off because I'm my own boss. And this is a wonderful one. How long will you wait to honor who you are? Oh, that just breaks my heart because I know I've waited a long time. I've put this off for years and years to honor who you are. You know, this gift that you have that you wanna share with the world, this is, this is your gift, this is your calling, it's your passion, it's what brings you joy, it's what lights you up. And doing that thing is not selfish. Doing that thing is what we all need to do. The world needs you to do that thing. The world needs that happiness and that light in the, in the world, our society. So it's, it's not a selfish thing. And honoring who you are, it just brings joy to everybody. You being authentically who you are gives other people permission to authentically be who they are. And that's just a gift that keeps on giving. It's a ripple effect through this world that I hope you take advantage of. And then along with that comes the other fear of, but what if I fail? What if people leave me? What if I'm left all alone? And that's another big part of this that we all have to grapple with. Uh, maybe certain people in your life are not the best for you and maybe them leaving wouldn't be the worst thing. But you know, that's a decision we all have to deal with. And is doing my passion gonna push somebody away? Is, is it gonna be a sacrifice for people, a sacrifice for myself? And only you can answer that question. What I like best about this book is just the idea that you can take baby steps. You don't need to quit your job and rent an artist studio and starve in order to do what you're passionate about. You can carve out that time. Maybe it's maybe it's that nap time when your baby's taking a nap and you can pick up your hand sewing or embroidery and do that. Maybe maybe it's taking 
a night class once a week, you go to a painting studio and you, you indulge your love of painting and you learn some techniques. Maybe it's taking yourself on an artist date, which we'll talk about uh, probably in the next blog, the book, The Artist's Way, which is such a beautiful way to spark your creativity and, and honor the artist within you. So maybe, maybe you take a Saturday, somebody watches the kids, your husband watches the kids, your partner watches the kids, and you go to a museum or you go to a garden uh, and bring a sketchbook and try and paint the flowers. Maybe you just take yourself to the beach or take yourself to the mall and look at all the beautiful clothes and all the beautiful patterns and be inspired that way. Just little things that you can do and carve out time for yourself. Maybe it's while the laundry's going or you know, maybe you make a crock pot meal that day so that you have time to focus on your crafts. It's whatever, whatever you can do to carve out that time is just going to feed your soul. It's going to, it's going to invigorate you. It's not time wasted, I think is the important thing here. That that time of you feeling passionate and uplifted and lit up lit up by the thing you love to do is never a waste of time and it's time that you're allowed to take it's time that's good for you it's good for everybody around you for you to take that time i think uh seeing my mom doing her woodworking a full-time mom making dinner having the kids help out so that she could do things like that on the weekends of going in the garage and refinishing furniture my mom had a hobby, she had a passion. And if she hadn't had that, I might've grown up thinking moms don't, moms don't do anything for themselves. They, they, don't, they don't take care of themselves, they just take care of everyone else. And it made my mom more of a three-dimensional person to me. It made her less of the archetypal mom and more of a real person. And something that she liked and she could talk about with me and we could connect over, not that I refinished furniture, but I really appreciated the work that she did. And later in life, learning how to paint, and she's really gotten into that and takes time for that and is retired now, so she, granted she has more time for that. But I just love that she's still exploring her creativity even as she gets older uh, and trying new things. And I think having that vulnerability and that beginner mindset is really important that some things aren't gonna work out, some things you're gonna look at and you're just gonna wanna throw it in the trash, and that's fine. Um, I've made bags that have sat in the corner <laughs> in punishment for a year, and I pick up the bag again a year later and I'm like, I don't know why I hate this bag so much. It doesn't look that bad. like having not seen it for a year, I can't really tell you all those little nitpicky things that I found wrong with it when I first made it. And sure, maybe the pattern didn't explain it well or it didn't go the way I thought it was gonna go, but it's a perfectly lovely bag that I should be using. Like, why is it in, in punishment, in solitary confinement in the corner? It's something beautiful that I could be using and that's what it's there for. So just take it easy on yourself and try and find some time, some time for you, some time to feed that creativity within you and share that with the world because that's what we all need right now is your creativity, your light being shared with all of us. So put down in the comments what you're, what are you working on? What do you want to do? Can, can you see a way to carve out some time in your day or even once a week to work on your stuff? And what would that mean to you? Uh, is it something you can ask somebody? Can you be vulnerable and ask somebody to help so that maybe you have a kid-free home for a couple of hours to work on this? So let me know your thoughts below and how you see this working in your life.
She's my corgi mix, and she's sitting on the couch with me tonight. And we're gonna take a look at my granny square blanket because it's getting huge, and I don't know how long I want to make it. I haven't made anything this big since college when I made an actual bedspread. So, Let's see how big. Oh, this is getting so big! Oh, wow. Yeah, it's really big. So if I put my feet up on the ottoman, it's covering my feet. I actually made it wider than I need to. Covering my feet and coming up to about right here. Um, I don't know. I think I might want to do a few more rows. This isn't really going to be a cold weather blanket. I have these beautiful uh, sheepskin minky type blankets that I love to use for winter, which keep me nice and cozy. <laughs> But this one's going to be more of a spring autumn blanket, I think. So it doesn't need to keep me super warm. But I'd still like it to be a decent size. And hitting right here, you know, you kind of like to go like this and tuck under. Oh, and Oreo wants to come say hello too. Oreo's my Springer Spaniel mix. Oh, Oreo, it's not ready for you to lay on yet. And this one they can actually lay on because it's not going to be sold. It's going to stay here in our house. So I think I want a few more rows. Let's see. I started with this color. I kind of like that it started with a, a really deep color and went into a light color. So I might want to do the reverse, only I've used up all of that yarn because they were all offcuts. They were all remnants. So I've got a nice dark color here, but I might actually go all the way until I hit a blue or some other color to end with. So I think I'll do a few more colors and then just call it a day. Boy, my blanket brings all the dogs to the yard. <laughs> all the dogs to the couch. Huh. So that's where we're at with the Granny Stripe blanket. Oh boy, he really likes the blanket. <laughs> And I'll continue working on it and show you when it's all done. I'll lay it out on the bed so you can see the entire thing. But it's going to be very nice. Uh, the colors are definitely something I don't oh, Oreo scooch, that I don't normally go for. I mean, it's crazy. It's really crazy. <laughs> normally, I make a whole blanket out of one of these colors in the stripes. So it's definitely been entertaining and it'll be very colorful <laughs> and it's couch time huh it's couch time <laughs> so I'll check in with you later and show you how I'm doing on the blanket Stop.
Welcome back friends. Well, it's been a busy week. Um, haven't gotten that much done, but it is what it is. Uh, as you'll see from the beginning, it was the first week of school and it was great to see the students around campus again. That shot you saw in the beginning was just a few students. It's not everybody. Obviously, it's a lot more crowded when everybody's out of class. <laughs> so I don't want you to think we only have five students running around campus because that's not true. Uh, I finished my, finished my pouch. So here's the pouch that we did, the Metro Double Zip pouch. And it's got the two pockets, which is nice. Only thing is, I'm using the five inch zippers, so it got a little wonky here. This space is not exactly, <laughs> it's more concave or convex than I want it to be. So I will work on that on the next ones. That's why I like to do a prototype. I've made one of these in the past, but it's been about a year since I made it. So, and I've got a little handle. So that's why I really like to make a prototype is because you just rediscover the pattern. I also, for some reason, decided to add a fusible fleece to this. I wrote it in the pattern last time and it really doesn't need it. It's got plenty of layers with the two pocket pieces. I don't know why I felt like I needed fusible fleece. And then the corners don't pop out as much. It's harder, everything's just too thick. So I'll, I'll know that going forward. I'm glad I didn't make all of them at the same time. So always good to do a prototype. One other thing I was gonna mention is, I hope you enjoyed learning about the crossroads of should and must. Uh, I've really been enjoying this book. There's a whole second half of it which I haven't explored that much. I was just blown away by the first part and really wanted to focus on that for you today. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, which is what brought this book to mind for me, is over the holiday break, I watched Tick, Tick, Boom, oh, which if you haven't seen, is beautiful and wonderful and heartbreaking. And I'm a musical theater fan so I really appreciated all the Easter eggs and everything that went on in that. And it was nice to hear other music from Jonathan Larson because I love Rent, love Rent. But it's, it's a very serious, depressing storyline for most of it. And I love those songs, but in Tick, Tick, Boom, you really get to hear a whole other side of Jonathan Larson's music. And it was beautiful to discover that after only having had one show in my life that he wrote. <clears throat> and Lin-Manuel did such a beautiful job. And, you know, his writing for me is problematic because it all kind of sounds the same, but it was nice having him direct the movie and have his eye and, and his character development, but with somebody else's music. So it was very unique for me, but it really brought up the point of suffering for your art. It's this myth that we have, especially in the United States, of if you want to be an artist, you have to suffer and you have to eat ramen and you have to not have a day job. Although Jonathan Larson did have a, a night job, day job, uh, to pay the bills, but just scraping by and really having to choose between having a career and doing what you're passionate about. So that's really what sparked uh, talking about this book with you was watching that movie and just it just brought up all those emotions around will will I get paid for this will I make a living off of this and those are fears that I have as a small business owner it's definitely something I think about all the time that's why I have a full-time job so that's about it for this week we've gotten done as much as we can get done and it's a pretty long vlog already so I'm gonna stop here and I just uh, want you to say in the comments what you're working on how you feel about the crossroads of should and must what's your should what's your must you know can you find those times for yourself to have that creative that creative time that production time for yourself and I really appreciate it if you'd hit the subscribe button and the like button which helps me get introduced to more like-minded people like yourself so have a great week, everybody.
Happy makes! Hello, Ramona. I can't shake the simple.